this sentence is false. Now immediately you think to yourself, that sounds kind of strange. Why is that? Very likely because we don't use that sentence every day. I'm not going to walk up to someone in the street and say, good morning, sir. This sentence is false. I mean, that's just strange and downright silly. But if you think about it a little bit more, you realize there are darker forces at work here. The paradox. Now, what is a paradox? Well, there are many different kinds of paradoxes. There are ones to do with physics, with time, with infinity, with philosophy. But we're going to be looking at a very famous logical paradox today, in the first of a series of paradoxes that I'll be doing. And this one is called the liar paradox. This sentence is false, is one version, the most famous version of that one. But we'll be looking at a two sentence version. The first one referencing a second, and the second sentence referring back to the first one. In this case, we're going to have two statements referring to each other. The first sentence referring to the second, and the second referring back to the first. The first sentence in this case is, The following sentence is true. And we are going to let that be A. So statement A is, the following sentence is true. The second sentence, which is the following sentence according to that first one, is, the previous sentence is false. The previous sentence, oh, I forgot the S there, sentence is false. And we are going to let this equal B. Now we have our two statements, A and B, and they refer to each other. Now in the first scenario, we're going to assume that the first sentence is true, the first statement. The first statement is, the following sentence is true, so that's A. Now we're going to assume statement A is true. Now if statement A is true, and statement A being the following sentence is true, if that statement is true, then B must be true. Then B must be true. And now, let's look at what B says. B says the previous statement is false. By assuming that A is true, we've now shown that B must be true. But B says the previous sentence is false. So therefore, if B is true and the previous sentence is false, then A must be false. And thus we arrive at this funny conclusion, which is our paradox. The paradox being that A is true as well as false. Now this is obviously something that is not easy to understand. And as with most paradoxes, there are ways to ways to solve this conundrum. But we won't get into that one today. That has to do with with semantic meaning and grammatical interpretation. So now we've seen that if we assume that statement A is true to begin with, we get to a paradox in which A is both true and false, if we just follow normal logic. Now let's assume in scenario 2 that A is false to begin with. Now if A is false, that means whatever it's saying is not true. It says the following statement is true. So that is not the case when we assume A is false. That means that B would then be false. Because B is the following statement and it cannot be true according to A being false. So now if B is false, then what happens to A? If B is false and B is saying the previous statement is false, if that is not the case, then the previous statement must be true if it is not false. So therefore in this third step we have that A must be true. Be true. So again, if we look at those three statements, statement 1 says A is false, therefore B in statement 2 must be false, and if B is false in step 3, A must be true. So again, we have a contradiction, a paradox. A is both false and true. So it doesn't matter which way you look at this, which way you start off with, what your assumptions are, it turns into a contradiction, a logical contradiction. And again, semantic and grammatical interpretation might have an answer or a solution to why this 
is a seeming paradox. Thanks for joining me for this first video on the series in paradoxes. Here are a few things for you to go try at home. The word left. Are there any guests left at the party? Or have they all left? The word cleave. Do two objects cleave tightly together? Or can they be cleaved apart? And last but not least, which side up does a buttered cat land? Thank you. And be sure to leave any comments on or requests in the comment section.